is by this theorem, S is equal to R times theta. S is equal to R theta. This is the arc length formula. Now, what I, do you remember how I just tried to convince you what one radian was and we tried to show that property, yeah. right? Um, when we did that, when I was trying to draw this on the board earlier, what was I forcing S to be? Uh, the length of R. The length of R. So I was actually, I wasn't drawing the angle. I drew out R and then I tried to draw R over here again, right? And then that forced an angle to happen. So in this formula, what would happen if, if the S here was R? You'd have R equals R theta, right? And what could you do on both sides? Divide by R and you get one equals theta. So what you're saying is that theta, the measurement of theta is one radian. So in the, in the case that S is R, this actually gives you back that the, the angle must be one radian. So here's your formula, you're free to use it. It's a great formula. Um, I will note though here, note, careful, theta must be in radians. Okay, must be in radians for this formula to work. You cannot, you cannot plug in degrees into this or else the formula falls apart completely. And you may be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, I like, I like degrees, so this formula isn't going to work for me. Well, there's a way to convert from degrees to radians and radians to degrees, and we're going to do that in just a minute. But first, I wanted to uh, show you this. So, hmm. If you, if you fix a radius and start rotating through an angle, then the length of the arc that you draw is given to you by that formula. Right? So here's my question to you. What is the circumference of a circle with radius r? Two pi r. You've heard that before, right? But can you use this formula to get the same thing? Imagine I start somewhere, right? I draw out a distance r, and then to draw a circle, I have to go all the way around, don't I? So what is the angle that I use there? What is my theta here to go all the way around? 360. But you have to be in radians. So 360 was 2 pi, wasn't it? So that theta must be 2 pi. So that means according to this formula, the s, which would be the length of this outside, would be the r times 2 pi, or 2 pi r, which is the formula that you should already recognize as being the circumference of a circle. What I'm saying to you is that this formula gives you the circumference formula. But this formula is more powerful because it doesn't force you to go all the way around. You can stop anywhere and still get the length. You can go the, pl the complete way or you can just take part of it. That's it. All right, so let me, let's, let's try and do an example. You have a question? Uh -huh. Okay. This formula here, yeah. All right, so uh, let's do this. Example here, a person walks around 
a circular track three times and travels 4,250 feet. So this person's like walking around this track, right? They go around the track three times and they travel 4,250 feet when they do that. Do you know what my question's gonna be? What's the radius of the track? How big of a track is this? It's a circular track, right? What have I given you? Let's try and understand what I've given well, Let me write the question down. What is the radius of the track? Yeah, so let's try and understand what you've been given here. A person walks around a circular track three times. What is that going around a circular track three times really giving you? Three revolutions, but what is that a measurement of? Is that how far you've gone, how wide the track is? That's how many, that's how many feet it takes to go around it three revolutions. Not this, not this part. Just if I tell you you go around three times, it's an angle. I've given you information about an angle, haven't I? If you go around three times, what would going around once be? 360, but because we're going to use a formula that needs radians, what's going around one time? 2 pi. So if you go around three times, 6 pi. Agreed? I'm going to draw the picture. I know we all love degrees, and I'm not going to badmouth degrees here, but I can tell you that in calculus, the, your, your days of degrees are almost coming to an end here, okay? We stick almost primarily in radians and calculus. It's almost exclusively radians. And that's just the way it is, all right? Easier to work with because you don't have to worry about the conversion, you know, when you're in degrees. Or when you're in radians, you don't have to worry about the conversion over. All right, so imagining, you know, here's the center of the track. Here's the track. You know, the person starts out, let's say, here. And then they walk around three times. So one, two, three times. That's an angle that they went through of right, six pi. That's that we're getting that from doing three times two pi, three revolutions, one revolution is two pi radians. So they have gone through an angle of six pi radians, which is about 18 or so radians. Remember what a radian looked like, right? Remember that radian? They did whatever 6 times pi is. 18 or so. 18. So they did 18 of those angles to get to do the three rotations. All right, that's, that's, uh, that's their angle. Now, what else are you given? They travel 4,250 4, feet. What is that? Is that the radius? No. That's the distance they went around, right? Now they went over, they overlapped themselves, right? Yeah. But the great thing about this formula is that this formula does not care if you go right on top of it yourself again. It's taking a measurement of how far you go. So we're also given in the problem S. S is 4,250 feet. We want R, right? That's what we want. And the formula that we have from the theorem is that S is R theta. Please, please recognize that if you divide both sides by theta, the formula becomes that. And if you divide both sides by R, the formula becomes that, right? So there's three equivalent forms of that equation. You can, if it, you isolate S, it's this. If you isolate r, it's this. If you isolate theta, it's this, right? So what's the radius? We're going to have to do 
R is equal to S over theta. S was 4,250 feet, and the theta was 6 pi. So we're going to need a calculator now. You got it? Did you do it? Yeah. What'd you get? Uh, Doesn't seem right. <coughs> you got 200? Did you say 2,000 or 200? Hmm? No, not at this point, no. Um, I think the reason you got 2,000 is because you did this divided by 6 times pi, but you didn't put 6 pi in parentheses. Yeah, so your calculator thought you did this. This divided by 6 times pi. So it did this first and then, then times that. So. Yeah, so you got what, 225? 225.47 ish, whatever, close enough. Uh, what though? Feet. Because we had feet here, right? Feet. That means the radius of this track is about 225 or so feet. Okay? Let's do some conversion, conversion uh, from degrees to radians and back and forth. I think converting degrees to radians and back and forth is actually pretty straightforward. Um, converting degrees to radians and the other way around, radians to degrees, back and forth. So all I'm going to use for this is the following property, that 180 degrees equals pi radians. That's what I'm going to use right there. We all, if we all agree that this is true, by the way, I didn't prove that to you, did I? I just told you to believe that, right? Okay, so we have to take that on faith. This equation, I can write this two different ways. Do you agree I can, I can divide both sides by pi radians? Both sides, divide both sides by pi radians. If I divide both sides by pi radians, then this, the left side will be 180 over pi, and the right side will be 1. Agreed? Right? If I divide this side by pi radians, I'm going to get 1. So this, this equation is equivalent to this. That's equal to 1, right? But what if I divide 180 on both sides? I get, what do I get on this side? 1, and on this side? Pi radians over 180. So that, you said that's equal to 1, though, right? So I could say that they're equal to each other if they're both equal to 1. So 180 degrees divided by pi radians is the same as pi radians divided by 180 degrees, but that's the same as 1. Do you all follow me? All right, I'm going to use this now. Somebody give me an angle in degrees. <coughs> Make it reasonable. 76. What? 76 degrees. 76 degrees. Okay, 76 degrees. Let's convert that to radians. What quadrant are we in? We're in the first quadrant, right? Because it's less than 90. That means that my answer should be smaller than pi over 2. Because pi over 2 is straight up and down. So to get this over to radians, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this times 1. Because if I multiply by 1, it doesn't change the problem, does it? Or it doesn't change the expression. But I get to choose. I can replace 1 with either one of these. And it just depends on what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get rid of degrees, right? So I would like to cancel degrees out. That means I want degrees on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is use this right here. These are called conversion factors. So I'm going to, con I'm going to use this. This is really a 1. And I'm just going to multiply this times pi 
I'm not even going to put radians anymore. I'm just going to put pi and then over 180, like that. Everyone, everyone see that I'm just multiplying 76 degrees times 1. It's just I'm choosing to write 1 in a clever way. And now my degrees will cancel. So on your calculator, you must do 76 times pi divide by 180. What do you get? Approximately. Go ahead. Don't be shy. One point three three, yep, about one point three three, about one point three uh, three uh, what? Radians. Radians. So I don't have to write radians, right? But I will. Radians. All right. Let's take something a little more more uh, frequently seen. How about forty five degrees? That's one of our common angles, right? You should be able to tell me the answer to this without even writing anything down. Just visualize that first quadrant, 45 degrees. What was our? Pi, pi over 4, right? Pi fourths. But let's use the formula. Pi, 180 again on the bottom. And yes, we could multiply this across and get a decimal, couldn't we? But let's try and keep the pi attached this time. Notice that we actually multiplied the pi in here. But because this is a common angle, I, let's try and keep the pi here. So let's just try and reduce the fraction 45 over 180. And 45 goes into both of these, right? It goes into this once and this four times. So you get 1 fourth pi or pi over 4. All right, what about the other way around? What if you want to go from radians over to degrees? So let's say I give you 3 pi over 4, and I want to go to degrees. Can you put radians at the bottom? Yeah. This time you want the radians to cancel and your degrees to appear. So on the ones that I circled over here was the one that had pi radians down here and 180 degrees up here. And fortunately for us, the pi's just cancel out, don't they? And then you get, what was it, 135? 135 degrees, though. Don't forget the symbol. That, and that should match up with what we drew, right? 135 degrees was 3 pi over 4, if you go back and look. Now, one that's not so common, 3 pi over 7. That's not one of your common angles. But about how many degrees is that? So you hit this with 180 degrees over pi radians. And the pi's cancel. And I think you'll get a decimal here. Somebody? Anybody? 77.14 degrees, right? Okay, good. We have 20 minutes. I still have a few things to talk about. You all doing all right? It's a long class. I think things will get a little more interesting as we go on because right now, you know, a lot of this is probably stuff you may have seen. How many of you have seen most of this? Okay. All right. Good. I hope that you seeing it again has not made me confuse you. <laughs> I hope, if anything, it's helped clarify stuff, but only you know. All right. Last little topic here. Well, there's a couple of things in this topic, but there's another theorem that we have. And this one is for the area of a sector. And I need to make sure that we understand 
you know, that we're all okay with what we mean by a sector. So let's say we, we start with a vertex, come out, stop, then rotate through some angle, theta. The previous theorem gave us a way of measuring this length, right? Right here. This theorem gives us a way of measuring the area in here, A. This is a very nice theorem. And the formula is as follows. A equals 1 half r squared theta. That's the formula. What do you think the, whole, the, the one condition is, though, on that theta? It's got to be in radians. The formula doesn't work without radians. So note, theta must be in radians. Now, that, that's not going to be as much of a problem for us now, right? Because if somebody gives us an angle in degrees, we can convert to radians and then use the formula. So let me, let me ask this. What is area of a circle radius r? So this, this should be something that rings a bell. Like you should, you should be, oh, I know what the area of a circle is. Someone told me that a long time ago. What is the area of a circle? Pi r squared. It comes from this, though. Because if you draw a circle, right, how far around are you going to go? What's your theta going to be if you go all the way around? 2 pi, right? No, it's all right. It's going to be 2 pi. Agree? So imagine that formula A equals 1 half r squared, but then you're replacing your theta full rotation 2 pi. And what happens? Twos are gone. Two, two and a half, one half of two is gone, and you just get pi r squared. So again, this formula is actually more powerful than that formula because this, will, this formula will give you the area of a full circle, but it'll also give you the, formula, the area of any part of a circle, as long as you know the angle that you want to rotate through. All right. <clears throat> Let's do an example. How about how about this one? Let's say that I have I'm going to try and draw something kind of interesting here. This is a building. This is a top view, OK? You've got this building over here. And I'm going to be interested in what's going on in this corner right here. And then let's say that we have this very, very awkward shaped parking lot, OK, that does this. This is looking from the top, OK? So you got all these little parking spaces in here for cars. Can you all see this? Can you understand what I'm doing? And then, now this is going to make no sense, but I'm completely pulling this out of the air, OK? You've got, you've got this, let's just say it's like a goat. Let's say you have an animal, OK? It's a, it's a goat, all right? is attached, tethered to the corner of the building. And let's say this is all grass over here, right? And he's tethered to a 20-foot leash. And he's free to roam anywhere over here in graze on the beautiful grass, right? 
And my question is, what is the grazing area for this goat? How much area does this goat have to graze out of? But I need to give you something. I need to give you the measurement of this angle in order for this to happen, for you to be able to do it. So let's say that this angle right here is 60, let's make it weird, 62 degrees. In other words, the goat can graze anywhere in green, but it's on the leash, so it can't go past that. So, so what do you got? How are you going to set this up? 360 minus 1, 360 minus what? 152. 152, is that what you said? Uh huh, that's good. What is it? Yeah, so it can't it can't do it can't do this and it can't do that. So we're really looking what for this uh, this arc that it sweeps out like this, like that. Like we're looking for the area in here, aren't we? That's what we're looking for. So we need to know what that angle is that it can, that it's allowed to rotate through. And all the way around is 360 degrees, assuming that this is a perpendicular. Okay, assuming that that's a right angle, 90 and 62, you get 152. Right, so what, what do we have here? We're going to use that formula. Area equals 1 half, what, r squared theta. Sir, yeah. what you got? Okay. I, I thought I, I thought last class we were were clear on that. Were we not clear on that? No, we are. Okay. So, what's your name? Last name? I'm not using my phone right. It's not what I'm asking you, sir. I'm asking you what your last name is. Zach Trimble. Okay. All right, Zach. Read through the syllabus again. Okay. There's policies on electronic devices. I'm, I've give, I'm giving you an opportunity to redeem yourself by allowing you to finish the problem. I think that's fair. Or, or you, you don't. Don't waste our time, though. If you don't know what we're doing, then you don't know what we're doing. Okay, all right. I think my point is made then, I think, right? Okay. So we're going to use this formula. We need to know the angle that the goat, we're, right, can go through. That angle is 360 take away 152, right? 208. So the angle we're allowed to rotate through, 208 degrees. However, what was your name again? Say. Says we can't use that. Okay, yeah, so let's, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Because all the way, if this, if this goat, poor goat, could go all the way around, that's 360, right? But it can't come in here, so it's not allowed to go through this angle, and it's not allowed to go through this angle. This angle is perpendicular, so that's 90 degrees, right? And then that's 62. Right, so that's 152. So what is 360, which would be the full rotation, but if you take out the 152? 208. Got it? 208. You sure? We're clear? Okay. okay. So, but we can't use that. You got to go to radians. So be, just don't plug it in now because that's, you're going to get some weird answers. It's not going to make any sense. All right, so first converting, I'm going to go 208 degrees, and I want it to radians, so I'm going to multiply by pi over 180, pi over 180 and then get, it, get that as a decimal.
whoever. 3.63. Any other? Any, anyone second that? Yes? Okay. All right, so this is our angle in radians. So I'll put rad here. We don't need it, but I'll put it there just so we are clear that now we can use it. And now I can come into this formula and I can plug everything in. So the area that this poor goat can graze through is one half r, which was 20 feet. It's been scribbled on over there. 20 feet squared times uh, 3.63. And we get to square it. So what happens when you square 20 feet? You get 400 square feet, right? And then half, so 200 square feet. And then by 3.63. I don't know, something. 726. 726 point something? No, no it's, it came out nice? Yeah, it is. Oh, nice. OK. Square feet. I'm using my, squigglies, my squiggly equals because anytime we start breaking the calculator out, we're, we're most likely to get approximations. Oh, yeah, because the 3.63 was rounded. Yeah, this was rounded, so. That's how much area that this goat can graze in. Now, the bad news is that for a, a goat to be healthy, they need 5,000 square feet. So it's not looking good for this goat. No, I'm just making that up. I, I know nothing about goats. Uh, like, yes, I'm a goat <laughs> farmer on the side. All right, so this is the type. I mean, this is obviously just a completely made up problem, but you can see the, some of the geometry in this that you have to kind of think through, like what do you have to take out, and then you know, make sure you convert your, your degrees to radians, and then plug in and your business. Yep. All right. Let's, let's start putting some things in motion, all right? Objects, I know we're almost out of time. I know it's been a long first week already, right? Objects tra uh, traveling in circular path. This is the last, yeah, I don't even know if I'll finish it. This is the last part of this, this section, though. All right, so what we're going to do now is, look, if we've got a circle, you know, if we draw circles, we can find er uh, areas of sectors. We can find lengths of, 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 of the sectors on the edge. Um, but what we're more interested in is things that are in motion. Right? We want things to start moving because that's more like the real world. So we're adding a, a cert an extra element to things, and that's time. Okay, so you have something moving along. We want to know how long it takes them to do something. So we're going to start with a very, a very, let's start with the formulas. And then once we get the formulas, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about um, uh, more basic stuff. So V is S over T. This is what we call the linear speed. So keep in mind, what we have in this picture is an object moving in a circular path. If I have some center and I have some radius and I have this object moving, that's not very good, moving along a path that would be part of the circle, right, created by this line segment. So we've got something moving along a circle then if you want to know what's called the linear speed of the object, it's V, that's the letter V. I know it kind of looks like an R. V, huh? Velocity. Velocity equals S. Do you remember what S was? Uh, no, it's confusing, isn't it? We shouldn't use that. S is that arc length. Okay, so in our picture, 
This piece right here was S. And then T is time. So let's go back, let's go back to that uh, person who was walking around that track. Okay, let's go back to that problem. Was it a girl, did I say? No, it was a person, right? It was a, I didn't specify? Okay, good, good. All right, so it's the goat, right? Um, so that, that person walked around a track, did three complete revolutions, traveled a total distance of 2,000, four or five, yeah, four, whatever. Okay, what if I tell you that it took them two hours to do that? Okay, so let's add that one element to that word problem. They did all that in two hours. The question is, what, is, what was their linear speed? Well, what's the only things you need to know? I need the time, and I need the distance they traveled, the arc length, right? Isn't that what we actually were given in the problem? Weren't we given arc length and we found radius? So all you'd really have to do here is take the arc length, the distance around which was given as what? You said it right, 4, then. 4, 2, 5, 0 feet, and then divide, divide that by time. Two hours. What's your question? Sure. Okay. So this is the distance the person traveled, and they did it in two hours. So divide that by two, and you get two, one, two, five, what? Feet per hour. Feet per hour, which we can write like this. Is that fast? Is that pretty fast or is that slow? Yeah, so we all understand miles per hour, right? Like if I, if I say, hey, I'm going to go throw myself into a brick wall at two miles per hour, you'd be like, big deal, right? But if I say at 200 miles per hour, everyone knows that's it, right? Everyone gets an A and it's the end of the semester. But it's because miles per hour makes sense. Feet per hour, not as much. Um, inches per second, that's something hard for us to visualize. It's not something we, we, we deal with. So let's, let's just real quick convert this. This will be the last thing. We'll just finish here. Uh, convert this to miles per hour. That's our answer. This is our linear speed. But in the book, in the word problems, they do ask you for the units, you know, like convert to miles per hour. So, okay. So I'm going to do it the way that I do it. I convert, the, I first rewrite this like this, uh, 21, 25 feet in one hour, and I want to go to miles per hour, so the hours is okay to have. I can have the hours here, it's fine. I just want feet, feet to miles. So I include a conversion factor here. I put feet here because I want it to cancel. I put miles here because I want it to appear. And now I need to know a relationship between feet and miles, and I heard 5,000. 280 feet in one mile. That's something you would have to know. That's something you have to know. That would be something you would have to know in order to do that problem. So yeah, I would, there, it comes up enough in this class that we go from feet to miles that you may as well just remember 5280. And now you just cancel your feet and you multiply across, which is just this times one, and then one times that. And now you're really going to take 2125 and divide it by 5280, and you get approximately 0 0.403. That's all right. It's approximate miles per hour. So less than one mile per hour, which is what traffic's like for me in the morning. All right. Everybody signed in? All right. Um, you can do most of the homework. 
from this section, it's not, really doesn't get messy until the word problems. So you should be able to handle the homework. We'll pick up, we'll pick up here when we come back next week and we'll start uh, right triangle trigonometry. Y'all have a good weekend. You have a question? Are we yeah. good? Okay. Have a good weekend. I'm going to turn off my camera here.